Light is the hope to all who seek Light is the way when moments are bleak So look up to the skies The light is Jesus Christ And all who seek will find Na 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 The crucified people care for migrants. Dear friends, I'm going to speak on the topic, the crucified people care for migrants. This lecture will have six points. One, a brief explanation of the term, the crucified people. Two, the poor migrants as the crucified people. Three, God's care for migrants. Four, the Israelites' attitude towards migrants. Five, the church's concern and care for migrants. And six, how we can extend our care for migrants. The first point, the crucified people, is a term coined by Ignacio Elacuria rector of the Central American University who was killed because of his fight on behalf of the poor and oppressed of San Salvador. According to him, the crucified people is the historical continuation of Yahweh's servant whom the sin of the world continues to deprive of any human decency, from whom the powerful of this world continue to rob everything, taking everything away, even life, especially life. The cry of Jesus on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? is a daily cry of the lives of a large number of people who live crucified lives. They live battered and broken lives, crushed, kept depressed by powerful people to suffer in poverty and oppression. Although there are many categories of crucified people, here we are focusing on migrants, the poor migrants as the crucified people. Number two, the poor migrants as the crucified people. Poor migrants all over the world live a crucified life as they suffer a double whammy in the strange land. They are poor and they are migrants, being despised by the natives for being outsiders and having no support system in times of difficulties and sickness. Their situation turns worse than before. The hope of a better life of many a migrant frequently ends in painful suffering and death. Every year, huge number of people die in their attempt to find better future across borders. Many lives are lost on the seas and in transit across country due to human trafficking and smuggling of migrants. Migrant Data Portal, while stating that since 1996, about 75,000 migrant deaths have occurred, says that this is the minimum estimate as majority of migrants deaths go unreported, just as the deaths of internal migrants or the domestic migrants. Abject poverty is the main reason of distress migration in India. A vast majority of socially and economically disadvantaged migrants live in misery, pain and hardships that go unreported 
because people have become indifferent towards them. This attitude of indifference in the host society may cause people there to think that what migrants face is far better than what they would find in their homeland. So their sufferings are taken for granted without regard for their basic human dignity. The immense tragedy of poverty, Amartya Sen says, is obvious enough. Lives are battered, happiness stifled, creativity destroyed, and freedoms are eradicated by the misfortunes of poverty. This tragedy of poverty is obvious in the lives of lower income migrants in India, who as crucified people are victims of different types of sufferings and unjust systems that are neither natural nor self-inflicted, but are rather externally imposed, which make them live each day in the shadow of death and languish there throughout their entire lives without adequate education, health care, work or means to change their lot. As crucified people, they perform jobs that are dirty, demanding and dangerous. Jobs that natives don't do. Their working conditions and their living conditions are unhygienic, miserable and pathetic. Their alienation by the natives contributes further to their daily experience of crucifixion. Instead of extending environment conducive for their growth, the natives' attitude to them is xenophobic and discriminatory. Joking Kampese, a scholar in migration, explains how migrants become victims of violence not just personal, physical and visible violence, but also the one that is invisible and seemingly has no perpetrators. This type of violence permeates the environment to the point where people become accustomed to it and they accept it as a normal fact of life. This is the worst type of violence which is happening in Indian society which considers the evils of poverty, discrimination and exclusion against migrants as something normal. The migrants become victims of violence that has the ability to cover up, go unnoticed and unchallenged. And migrants as crucified people are also treated as people of lesser worth whose value is measured in terms of their utility. This is a common attitude of the natives towards migrants. Other than migrants' utility, their presence is considered a nuisance. In our culture of indifference towards migrants, we fail to notice the depths of their sufferings as crucified people. We also fail to realize that we ourselves are responsible for adding to those sufferings and in keeping migrants crucified by our discriminatory and xenophobic attitude towards them. The government and we fail to be sensitive to migrants' needs as human beings, knowing that they migrated because of disadvantages back home. This insensitivity and indifference towards them came to the fore during the first COVID lockdown imposed by the government of India. Images of the crucified people undergoing different types of suffering and pain were very disturbing and their memories are still very vivid. They were subjected to pain and suffering through violence that seemingly has no perpetrators. Can we remain indifferent to such sufferings, struggles and deaths of our migrant brothers and sisters? What does God want from us? Point number three, God's care for migrants. The chosen people of God were called to live at Canaan in Israel. But when there was a famine in Israel, they migrated to Egypt. In Egypt, their life flourished because Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob, 
was in a position of authority. But many years after the death of Joseph, the Pharaoh who ruled Egypt reduced the people of Israel to slavery. They were beaten and oppressed. They groaned and cried to God for help. Their cry ascended to God. God decided to come down to liberate them. Yahweh says, I have seen the humiliation of my people in Egypt. I hear their cry when they are cruelly treated by their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. I have come down to free them from the power of the Egyptians. Exodus chapter 3, 7 to 8. The ancient Israelites as migrants experienced God's presence with them on various occasions, particularly on occasions of dangers, grave needs, hardships and troubles. Jesus gives a completely new teaching about the way migrants are to be treated. Accordingly, while still considered as one of the poor, the migrant assumes a new dignity. Not only is he or she under the protection of God, but Jesus identifies himself with the migrant. Matthew 25 verse 45 This identification of God with migrants should make us cautious of our attitude and behavior towards them and the way we treat them. Point number four. The Israelites' attitude towards migrants. The Bible presents the migrant as a moral category that makes a claim on the host community and calls for a certain mode of response towards them. Once they reach the promised land, the Israelites don't treat their migration experiences as events of the past and forget about it. Unlike many of the well-to-do and well-settled former migrants and their families today, who, as new citizens, fail to empathize with migrants' sorry plight. Ancient Israel's sense of vulnerability and dependence on God, captured in the condition of being migrants in a foreign land, helped the people of God to imagine how migrants among them would feel, and thus it inspired them to love migrants and provide for them. We could learn from their response towards migrants, which was based on three motivations. 1. Historical Motivation The experience of the Israelites as migrants in Egypt and their experience of God's love and intervention to liberate them motivated them to care for migrants in their midst. Studies show that all people living all over the world are migrants. They have the blood of migrants since their ancestors have been migrants. There are well-settled Indians living in almost all countries of the world. Goans are living in over 52 countries and in several states of India. This awareness that we are all migrants or descendants of migrants should remind us to treat migrants as the Israelites treated them. Second motivation, theological motivation. God loves the migrant and he asks the Israelites to love migrants. Leviticus 19, verse 18 and verses 33 to 34. God translates his love in action by providing migrants with food and clothing. Deuteronomy 10, verses 18 to 19. And he wants his people to love them as a sign of their love for him. Our faith in God and the experience of his love for us should motivate us to love migrants. The third motivation, moral motivation. In Israel, migrants were among those who had no power, who could not even compete and were socially weak and landless. 
any ill treatment of them triggered god's swift judgment malachi 3 verse 5 god's option for the poor gives us the moral obligation to reach out to the poor migrants and avoid ill treating them the fifth point church's concern and care for migrants Jesus came to give human beings life in abundance and the church has a duty to do the same. Pope John Paul II says that the church's ministry to migrants is a living sign of Christ who came to give life in abundance to all. The church has been directly involved with the issues of migrants not only through her social teachings but also through her multifaceted apostolates for them Pope John Paul II Benedict the 16th and Pope Francis have spoken and written widely about the problems faced by migrants and the church's concern towards them Pope Francis has made the issue of migration one of the priorities of his pontificate he not only makes a mention of migrants in his reflections but also gets them personally involved in reaching out to them comparing today's migrant to the despoiled traveler on the road to Jericho Luke 10:30 who was beaten and abandoned Pope John Paul II says that it is the duty of the church to be close to migrant like the good samaritan pouring on his wounds the oil of consolation and the wine of hope consolation and hope is what is very much necessary to migrants as they feel lost wherever they try to pitch their tent to survive all the church's care towards migrants takes different forms pope francis wants her to adopt a course of action that involves a welcome b protect c promote and d integrate in other words he wants the church to focus on the integral development of all migrants this is a program to liberate them from being on the cross number 6 how can we extend our care for migrants I suggest eight ways. Number 1. We have to be sensitive to the feelings of migrants because they too are human beings. Treat them as human beings with respect that human beings deserve. 2. Avoid addressing them with words that are offensive and hurting. For example, words such as ganti or gantia or ganti ke bachche should be avoided number 3 promote a positive view of migrants in our parishes and communities negative views about migrants promote prejudices against them which cause a lot of harm to migrants individually and to the migrant community four try to promote human development of poor migrants and their children helping in educating migrant children could help them to break the cycle of poverty five the society of saint vincent de paul does noble service to a large number of our needy brethren mostly locals each conference of saint vincent de paul could take the responsibility of identifying and reaching out to migrants who live in their respective parishes the conferences could also see if migrants have their basic necessities met defend their human rights and promote their human dignity 6 studies show that many a migrant women and children become victims of sexual exploitation in tourism related activities in goa those who come across such cases 
have a grave moral obligation to prevent such evils. Rescuing the victims and reporting the perpetrators of such crimes to the law enforcement authorities could go a long way in saving many a woman and children from lasting harm. Number seven, as migrants in other countries, Goans could reach out to other Goans to provide a support system so that no Goan feels lost in foreign land. Eight, Bible tells us that God loves migrants and promotes their well-being. God's special love for migrants demands that they be loved and protected, not ill-treated nor neglected. Thank you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.